If you listen to the baseball experts talk, Scotty Pugh's picture on a baseball card is a picture you better get used to seeing. Since his senior league days, Scotty Pugh has been projected as a can't-miss Major League Baseball product. And since he started playing high school baseball, people believe in his abilities now more than ever. He's probably the best athlete that I've ever coached. You know, he's a great athlete, uh, he's a great baseball player. And Scotty always feels like, you know, that he's never on top of his game and he's always working at it. If you know sports, you know Scotty Pugh's talents don't stop at just baseball. He's an outstanding athlete in both football and basketball. And he's also been known to play a pretty good round of golf. But while people drool over his athletic abilities, some forget he's still only a 17-year-old high school junior. But through the years of being in the spotlight, he's learned to live with other people's expectations oh, and the it pressures is, that go uh, along with it. I don't really feel a whole lot of pressure, I don't think. You know, I just kind of take it in stride and, and you know, try and be myself. While there are plenty of people that marvel at Pugh's athletic ability, Scotty Pugh knows he has to look at the big picture. And five days a week, nine months out of the year, that big picture includes school. Definitely school has to come first, you know, you have to keep that in mind and I think <clears throat> baseball is right there behind school, you know, uh, it's, it's real important in my life but I think, you know, I have to keep school in mind and, and just work hard and in the classroom and then baseball's next. Because of sports, Scotty Pugh has enjoyed a lifetime of great moments already. So whenever he can, he and other members of the Cooper baseball team do their very best to give a little back to kids who may not enjoy those same moments. And judging by the looks on the faces of everybody in the West Texas Rehab Courtyard, the Cooper baseball team wins not only on the field, but in places where winning can't be measured. Steve Busalaki, Big Country Sports. Scotty Pugh is perhaps the greatest three-sport athlete in Abilene Cooper sports history. He was a four-year starter at first base on the baseball team, a three-year starter at quarterback on the football team, and a three-year starter at point guard on the basketball team. It was in baseball where Pew really shined, however. He led District 4-5A in home runs as a freshman. The next two years, in 1987 and 1988, Pew was one of the top hitters in the middle of a lineup on a Cooper team that won back-to-back -back Class 5A state baseball championships, one of only four schools in the history of the state's largest classification to accomplish that feat. Cooper entered the playoffs with a 20-7 and record, and it all got started on a crazy night in Lubbock. Monterey finished the regular season ranked fifth in Class 5A. Some said if Cooper could get past the Plainsmen, they would go far in the playoffs. The sun shined early for Cooper. Jason Sattery had his good stuff early in the game, and the Cooper bats were buzzing. The Cougars built up a 7-0 lead. Then they fell apart. Monterey took over with a 10-7 lead going into the seventh. In Cooper's seventh, something happened. The Cougars exploded for five runs. Monterey pitching all of a sudden was no longer a factor. Cougar fans were saying it was this game that put Cooper baseball into championship form. Cooper won the game 12-10, and now Monterey had to come to Abilene to win two games. Monterey's visit that Saturday afternoon at Cooper Field was a short one. Jason Sattery had not pitched well in Lubbock, but threw a masterpiece in Abilene. Sattery got plenty of help from Scotty Pugh. Pugh knocked in three runs, and Monterey's season was fading fast. Cooper catcher Kyle Heller broke out of a season-long slump by knocking in three runs. Cooper clobbered Monterey pitching with 11 hits. The Plainsman could get no hits off Jason Sattery. 10 to nothing was the score. Sattery with a no-hitter struck out 10 in five innings. Monterey went home for good. El Paso Coronado was next up for Cooper, and they didn't last long. Cooper won the first game 5-2, to two, and in the second game, Lance Grider got the call and answered it. Grider pitched five and two-thirds innings of perfect baseball. Scotty Pugh hit two home runs in Rose Park. And Cooper nailed Coronado nine to one. Lance Grider would be the hero. He ended up with a three-hitter, and Cooper's season would continue. The first game of the regional playoffs against Duncanville, Jason Sattery hit and pitched his way to a simple win. At a packed house at Hunter Field, the Cougars breezed to a nine to one win. Four days later, in Arlington, the unethical Cooper fan showed up in big numbers to greet Duncanville coach Bob Rombach. Rombach had all sorts of problems on that day. 
Duncanville pitching got hammered. Scotty Pugh hit him another home run, and Cooper blew him out. Everything went Cooper's way, even the things that weren't supposed to go their way. Cooper fans were worth at least five runs, but they didn't need them. 17 to two was the way this one ended, an end of season for Duncanville. On a dreary night in DeSoto, the Cougars exploded for seven runs in the fifth inning. Scott Malone sparkled with a three-run home run. A tired, sick, and weak Jason Sattery pitched a three-hitter. A relapse of the flu was setting in on Jason. Cooper drove home in the rain with an 8-3 win, and by now they were one win away from Austin. Game two against DeSoto, Jason Sattery pitching on nothing but guts. DeSoto had a very good baseball team. Jason Marshall got Cooper's only two hits of the afternoon. Cooper squeaked it out with a 2-1 win. Jason Sattery was a sick hero. Cooper Cougars were in Austin needing two more wins to give them 30 wins for the season and also a state championship. Cooper got Eagle Pass in the semifinals. The Eagle Pass Eagles looked scary on paper. A 30-4 record, three good pitchers, and solid all over. In the first inning, Cooper stole a run on Eagle Pass. Raymond Marino charged in from third. It could have been the run that would eventually give Cooper a state championship. Jason Satchery was fighting off the flu bug, but had trouble fighting off the Eagle Pass batter. Going into a crazy seventh inning with a 4-1 to one lead, the heat and the humidity in Austin took control of Satchery. Eagle Pass put runners on base and started scoring runs. It was no longer a 4-1 to ballgame. And in the wee hours of the morning, the last out of the game finally came for Cooper. <laughs> Cooper won the game 4-3, to but they weren't finished in Austin yet. The following day, on June the 10th, for the state championship, Cooper played Round Rock Westwood. Westwood had beaten Cooper twice early in the year. On this night, all of Abilene would be focused in on Lance Grider. Grider retired six of the first eight batters he faced and include four strikeouts in a row. Once in the one-two pitch. That's while he struck him out. The hat trick here in the second for Lance Grider. Get the Cooper Cougars come out of the dugout and meet Lance Grider at the third baseline. It's all over him. He just struck out the side. He struck out his last four batters in a row, and Lance Grider is smoking. In the fourth inning, Cooper broke a one-to-one -one tie with four runs. Cooper sent the entire batting order up to the plate. Cooper led seven to three going into the seventh. Just like the night before, the Cougars wouldn't get out easy. Westwood got their first two batters in the inning on base. Lance Grider had given the Cougars everything he possibly could, but it was time for a change. Jason Sattery going to get the call. What an ovation for Lance Grider, who stays out on the baseline until Sattery gets to the mound, takes a look at him, and he says, Sattery, you're my man. Satchery gave up a double. It scored a run. It was seven to four. But the next two Westwood batters went down on strikes. And Jason Satchery was going to finish it off. Satchery bearing down everyone on their feet. The first pitch to Dan Hall. Swung out, hit in the air to right field. Heavily. This is at first. He just bounced around. He makes the catch.
Only Abilene High in the mid-50s and Duncanville in the mid-70s in the large schools division had won back-to-back -back titles. And now add Abilene Cooper to that list. Pew, who earned all state honors in baseball and all district in football and basketball, went on to play baseball at the University of Texas. He led the Southwest Conference in batting average as a freshman and then advanced as far as double A in the San Diego Padres organization. Pew returned to Abilene to serve as the baseball coach at Cooper and then at Bryan before focusing his career on coaching football. He was the quarterback coach at Highland Park where he helped tutor Matt Stafford, now the quarterback at Georgia, and helped lead the Scots to a state championship and a state runner-up finish in Class 4A last fall. In January, he was named as the new head football coach at Granbury. Please welcome the player with the sweetest left-handed swing I've ever seen for a high school baseball player, Scotty Pugh, the final member of the class of 2008 in the Big Country Athletic Hall of Fame.